Picking back up, part two of the Baltimore Bend Conservation Area. Three part Wild Wednesday adventure. And it's at the bottom of this too steep incline. I do see a large recess in the trunk of a tree, so we have to go check that out. Oh, and one I didn't even see here on the way down. That goes much deeper than I expected. You might not be able to see it on the camera, but there's a further hole diving at the back of the tree there. Pretty cool, but nothing appears to be in there at the moment. That slight glow is the sun hitting the camera, reflecting a little light in there. Gonna have to start bringing a flashlight just for peeking in trees. Why does that sound illegal or perverse? Uh, bring a flashlight for peeking in trees. Never mind. That's strange. Typically, <clears throat> those purple markings mean end of conservation area, or rather they mean private property stay out. But these must simply not have been removed when 
this chunk of the conservation area was added. Because there clearly aren't any end of public use area signs. So, we keep going. Oh, check it out. Woodpeckers. Evidence of woodpeckers. Have you hugged a tree today? Hug a tree. Trees are important. Be nice to trees. They're special. <clears throat> now, from here I can see that uh, in about a hundred feet or so we start to climb again. And it looks like this might be the tallest hill so far. So I'm a little excited to get to the top of it. Until I start climbing it and then my legs are no longer excited. This is nice. It appears almost as if, well for certain, that this is a trail cut by some member of the conservation department. Impressive. Impressive leafage. Littlefoot would be proud, right? Don't act like you haven't seen land before time. Part of a walnut husk. With the walnut inside, of course. Hopefully, with any luck, this trail takes us right to the peak or summit. It's hard to say if it's, uh, if the elevation keeps rising, but it appears it does from the height of the tops of the trees. If you sort of mentally average the tops of the trees and use that to estimate elevation, you can get some idea. not perfectly accurate, but uh, it's an estimate. Wow. Clearly the vines here know what they're doing. And for some reason this blackberry plant thought it was a good idea to grow in the middle of the path. Come on, blackberry, you know better.
so quiet. Let's test something. Echo! <clears throat> Not bad. The reason I've stopped is just to make some pocket space for collecting some wild chives quickly. If you have a recipe that calls for onions, try using those as a replacement sometime if you stumble upon them outdoors. <clears throat> I'll have to cut to the left soon if the trail doesn't curve on its own to the left. Because I'm certainly not going to visit a place like this that's so hilly without going to the top of the tallest hill that I can find. Yeah, there's a dip. So let's go off the trail. Thank you, tree. I'm gonna get there and find out the trail does curve around.
possibly a field mouse. Looking around, it definitely seems like this is the high point. I could barely hear an owl just now. Wow. Impressive view. Okay, I'll climb down. You don't got to squeak at me. I'm kind of curious to see where this takes us. Oh, so what are the options here? Do we cut down to that maybe marshy looking area? Or stay here at the higher elevation? Let's take a look around the corner ahead and make our decision before committing to either one. Possibly this trail circles down to that other place. Do you see those bright blue, silvery? Plateaus on the horizon out there, that's the water part of the river. I know of course that might seem a little weird since Missouri is notorious for twisting and turning. Rivers selfishly refuse to go in straight lines, those jerks. Who do they think they are? They know 
need to build roads and dams and rails to accelerate the death of the planet. Reconsidering, I should probably talk a little louder to accommodate the wind. Kind of interesting here. You see this bare patch with a few holes every so often. And then of course these light snail shells. See how this dirt is so loose? That it just comes apart in my fingers. This isn't just from the wind up here keeping it dry. This, these snail shells and all these acorn husks are from probably mice or field rats that live there. Quite a slope. Let's check this side first. I think actually I'm, I'm pretty positive that I see a deer stand down there. Which unless it's some sort of <clears throat> conservation recording project, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the conservation area must end down there, or it's a leftover deer stand from before this location was donated, and then the conservation department just didn't take it down. I mean, similar to the barbed wire and tons of other leftover pieces of farm equipment and other things that you've seen throughout the Wild Wednesdays. Uh, I believe at the Schiffer Decker Conservation Area, I actually showed you guys a, a car. my ankle yesterday wrestling a goat, but uh, not too bad. Oh yeah, well there you see the sign says end of public use area. So our route has been chosen for us at steep incline. At the top of this somewhat steep incline is our path. I can see my footprint on top of it somewhat, and then here's a better example. These footprints aren't very large, so suggestive of a younger deer. Nothing strange about that, of course. Deers have babies. But interesting nonetheless. Suddenly I'm wondering, is there a phone app for identifying tracks? You take a good clear picture of a track you find. And it runs a couple 
algorithms over the picture to try to identify the track. If it doesn't, one of you guys should, one of you guys or gals should make it. I said it was steep. Honestly, it would probably be safer to get off of the trail and stay closer to the trees since they give something to grab onto. Ah, that's purple paint. Stinks of greed. Hmm, another fork, left or right. Let's take a look down the left and then decide. My guess is that this left path is the one we didn't take on our way up the incline over there. So let's avoid it. Hmm, that looks kind of interesting. Let's check it out. Well, nothing inside. I know now, after the owl incident, to be a little more careful when leaning my head over a hole in a hole in a tree you you perverts you know what I meant stop it <clears throat> Ooh. 
Wow, that tree's gnarly, bro. I'm not even sorry for that. Oh, check it out. There are some depictions of fairies sitting on shelf mushrooms like that. Mushrooms and fairies have a few interactions in tales, myths, legends. So I always try to take a closer look at mushrooms when I do find them. Unless they're the kind I eat, in which I eat them. Ah, I wish you guys, wish all of you could be here. At this moment, the specific spot we're moving through, you can see this V is cut from water traffic, and then it forms that ravine there. But the smell, the scent of the saturated dirt, smells like a spring day after a long but light rain. I can see ahead the trail turns to the right. I did. I do think that the uh, last sort of parking unit that I caught sight of on the drive in was further, and it was on the uh, left side as I came in, which would mean we might be headed towards it, since I assume the trails connect to those parking units. I'm going to take a short break, rehydrate, and maybe get a handful of almonds. Interesting little mound there. If it wasn't so close to <clears throat> the trail, I would assume it was something else. But as you can see, there's mounds like that somewhat scattered near the trail. Probably from pushing the brush off of the path after they uh, chopped it down a bit. So, I'm going to take a quick break. This has been the second segment of the Baltimore Bend Conservation Area Adventure. At least, the at least the first one, in case we revisit. If you dig this sort of thing, you don't want to miss the third part. There will be a subscribe button in the corner. And if you have any suggestions or critiques, leave those in the comments section below. I'll definitely read them. Thanks. See you soon.